So today is 9-11, which I think even for my non-American friends, fans, viewers, subscribers, followers, probably have this day associated with a lot of emotions. I mean, as an American and at the age that I am, I vividly remember where I was and what I was doing, how uh, the teachers in school reacted. I mean, I remember sitting in a uh, classroom, I think it was maybe seventh or eighth grade for me, you know, sitting in a classroom and all of a sudden a teacher came bursting into the room and ran up to our teacher and interrupted the lesson and whispered and then they ran out into the hall and then I remember the look on the teacher's face fighting back tears and not understanding what was going on and kind of hearing chaos in the hallways and then my, uh, just a little while later, I got called down to the principal's office and I didn't understand why and when I got there, my mom was there in the middle of a school day. She was always at work. She was never available in the middle of a day. And she was there, said, get your stuff. We're going home. Don't ask any questions. Like she, she was really, she was panicked. And uh, she grabbed me and my little brother and my little sister, uh, all at different schools, all three of us at different schools at the time. Um, and, and she grabbed us all and brought us home. And she just huddled the the three of us in her arms sitting on the the cold hardwood floor right in front of our, our little TV in our living room as we watched the uh, the towers fall. And I know that I didn't understand at the time what was happening, but I knew something really important. You know, I, I was just old enough to understand the gravity of the situation without having the worldliness yet uh, of even a teenager, you know, to to really get the implications. But that's something that, you know, my generation and, and a few years, you know, for the next bunch of years, you know, we all grew up with, we lived with, um, you know. But as someone who spends a huge portion of my life now, my career speaking with and for uh, college students, especially for incoming freshmen, you know, I, I just wrapped up you know, doing like 18 events for college freshmen over three weeks across the country. And the thing that struck me the most was nothing that they explicitly said or did, but just the realization that incoming college freshmen right now are the first group ever who were born after 9-11. It's been 18 years. It's just the history books for them. It's something that happened in the world before they were born. It's not It's not a part of their world, their reality in the way that it is for those of us who lived through it. Uh, just like, you know, the JFK assassination was uh, part of, you know, stuff our parents lived through uh, when they were in their formative years for, for, for me and my generation um, that we've only ever heard about from stories. And so I think this day has become this annual reminder for many people about the the evil in the world and 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 the the horrible nature of of humans and danger and a lot of really negative things rightfully so but i also think that it has become an annual reminder of the incredible courage and strength and beauty of humanity when we come together, when we put aside our differences in order to come at a an evil, a, a horror, um, in order to, you know, when we can find these shared values and these shared beliefs, we find that the day-to-day -day disagreements, they're important. You know, politics, we disagree over politics. It's worth disagreeing over and debating over. It's not that it's not important, but this day is a reminder that there's more important things than the disagreements we have on a daily basis and how incredible human beings are when we, uh, when we bond together over a shared set of values and beliefs. The idea that freedom and dignity and respect and generosity are basic human rights. Um, and so with, with that in mind, I, I wanted to just read to you a passage from one of my favorite books lately, which is um, from my friend Peter Gazzardi. This is called Emeralds of Oz, Life Lessons from Over the Rainbow. And 
I'm guessing if I just mentioned The Wizard of Oz, you just smiled like I just smiled. I think on a day like today, it's worth smiling over the optimism and the joy of humanity when we come together at the same time that we recognize the sorrow and the grief of those that have been lost and, and the evil. And so I'm going to read a short passage out of Peter's book, uh, which is called, As You See the World, So It Shall Be. As the cowardly lion bears witness, our experience of life is shaped by what we believe. If I think the world is a scary place, then for me, it's going to be frightening. When I establish a conscious belief about how things work, I'm going to look for evidence to support it and even behave in ways that reinforce it. Acting fearful, for example, tends to bring out the aggressor in other people, whereas acting assertively can have the opposite effect. If I believe most people are helpful and friendly, then that's how they're going to show up for me. Every now and then I like to confirm this hypothesis by testing it. When I see someone on the street or in the supermarket or the gym who looks grumpy or even intimidating, I'll go out of my way to say hello. It's amazing how often even the most hostile looking person will respond with a friendly greeting or brighten that scowling face with a companionable grin. As the famous saying goes, be the change you want to see in the world. When you greet the world with a smile, the world smiles back. I hope that if nothing else, in between the sorrow and the grief and the admittedly earned pessimism that 9-11 brings, we can also take a moment to see the beauty of human connection, the light that opens up when we show up for people on a daily basis, look them in the eye and say, I hear you, I see you, and I'm here for you. Thanks so much.